going to continue on our message about being real. Being real. And, um, you know, sometimes as Christians, we feel like we got to pretend. We feel like we got to put on. We got to put on a show. No. What we really need to learn how. We need to reveal. We need to reveal our weaknesses as, as well as revealing our strengths. A lot of times we just want to reveal our strengths. We want to have. We want to show how strong that we really are. But when I reveal my weaknesses. That's when he can make me strong. But until I reveal my weaknesses, he can't really make me strong. You know why? When I reveal my weaknesses, it lets me know I can't make it on my own. I need you, Jesus. I need your help. I need your help. And that's what we do when we re reveal our weaknesses. So we're going to look at Matthew 5. And this is our the scripture that we're uh, going to start with. And see the multitudes, he went up to the mountain, and he was set, his disciples came unto him. And he opened his mouth and he taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Again, we have to define what does that word poor mean? We've talked about different definitions, we've talked about being humble. We're going to talk about another definition of what that word poor means. It means unpretentious. Unpretentious. In other words, when I'm poor in spirit, in my own spirit, in my own abilities, and when I'm poor in my own strength, then I can be made strong in Him. When I reveal my weaknesses, and I don't pretend, being poor in spirit, is not having a proud, cocky attitude. Right. Like, I'm so holy, holy, nothing can ever touch me. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, even Jesus Christ was touched mm -hmm. with certain things in life. Right. Even Jesus Christ felt at times that God had forsaken him. Yeah. And even Jesus Christ said, you know, in one place, the Spirit is indeed willing but my flesh is weak. You've got to acknowledge, church, the weakness of your flesh. If you get to the point where you think you can handle it all, I can do it, I can do it, and I'm proud, and you become proud and cocky. God will put you in a position where you realize, I can't do it. This is a situation that I cannot handle. Because sometimes in life, we want to be able to handle every situation that comes our way. You know, whatever, whatever comes my way, I can handle that. <coughs> but there's going to be times in our life that we're going to have to cry unto the Lord. Yes. Because there's going to be situations that's going to arise in our life that are bigger than us. Yes. Situations that we've got to recognize we cannot handle on our own. And God will allow us to get into situations like that so we will look unto Him. Like the psalmist David said, I look unto the hills. And again, he wasn't actually looking at the hills themselves, but that means I'm looking in the direction I'm looking up. I may be down in a valley, but I'm looking up toward the hills. You know, like the song said this morning, though you may be in the valley, he sees the mountain you'll be standing on. And David was at a low point in his life. But he said, I look into the hills whence cometh my help. In other words, I can't do this on my own. I can't make it on my own. I don't have the strength. I don't have the abilities. I don't have the wisdom. Have you ever been in a situation in your life that you just didn't know what to do? I don't know how to handle this. It may be with one of your children. It may be a, fi a financial situation. It may be a family problem. But have you ever been in a situation that you said, I just don't know what to do. I've tried everything and everything I've tried has failed. 
When you tried everything and everything has failed, try Jesus. When your strength is weak and you tried and you used all your natural abilities, you used all the wisdom that you've applied through life. You know, it doesn't matter how old we get. You know, some of us elders, we look at, boy, I'm old and I've acquired a lot of wisdom and I can handle this and I know how to handle that. And I'm, I'm going to tell you what, there's, I'm 68 years old and there's still a lot of things come my way that I realize, God, I don't know what to do. I really don't know how to handle that situation. It may be one of, you know, one of your children. Again, it may be a family situation, some kind of other situation. It may be a, a, a physical sickness in your body. And it gets to a point, I don't know what to do. Amen. And, you know, I go to the doctors, and really, to be honest, the doctors don't know what to do. But when you've, re when you, when you've used up all your resources in the natural, try Jesus. Try Jesus. <laughs> So we want to look at Matthew 23, and we've already discussed some of this, so we're going to start in the 12th verse, Sister Michelle. <laughs> we'll go to the 12th verse, because we've done discussed all this. And whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased, and he that humble himself shall be exalted. But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees. Now, scribes and Pharisees was a religious bunch. They were real religious. It doesn't mean that they were spiritual, but they were religious. I mean, they knew the Old Testament law from the beginning to the end. They knew the Old Testament law. They knew the law, but they didn't really have a relationship with God. You've got to have a relationship with God. And he said, But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites. For you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. For you neither go in yourselves, neither suffer you them that are entering to go in. In other words, they had the law. And what they would do, they were self-righteous in themselves. And there were people maybe that were struggling. And, and they wasn't doing it exactly the way the Pharisees and the Sadducees were doing it. You see? They had their own self-righteousness. They had done broad the, uh, their garments. They had done made their garments even longer. And they had done took care of the outward. But on the inside, they were empty. So he's saying to them, here, he's saying to them, but Lord, do you scribes and Pharisees, you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. They're trying to get into the kingdom of heaven. But you're trying to make it to the point you got to do this and you got to do that. you got to do this and you got to do that. you got to straighten this out and you got to straighten that out before you get into the kingdom of God. Let me tell you something. You get into the kingdom of God and you let God take care of all of that stuff. You get into the kingdom of God. But there's a lot of people who want to straighten everybody out. But you know what really... He was talking against the Pharisees. He was talking against that religious bunch. And they were trying to straighten out everybody else. But you see, they're the ones that really needed to be straightened out. Let me tell you what Jesus does. He goes to where the need is. They're the ones that needed to be straightened out. Because they thought, you know, and, and that's, we're going to go on. Because there's a part that I really want to get into. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you devour widows' houses. For a pretense, you make long prayers. Therefore, you shall not, you shall not receive the greater damnation. Take note what it says. For a pretense, you make long prayers. Now you might say, Brother Ralph, so in other words, our prayers have to be short? No. He's not talking about you can't pray long. Some people say, oh, I like that just a little short prayer. It doesn't, it, you're missing the point altogether. It's the motive behind why you're praying. If you're praying to be seen of men, and that's what they were doing. 
They were going through, you know, they were dressing to be seen of men. They had already broadened uh, their garments and made their garments longer than anybody else. Make sure that our ankles don't even show. That's what, a little bit ahead, they had said they had broadened their garments. They wanted to make sure that even their ankles didn't show because they wanted to reveal their holiness. You see, man looks on the outward, but God looks on the heart. He knows what's inside. And inside their heart was filthy. Yeah. And then he goes on to say, and again, yeah, I, you know, it's nothing wrong with praying long prayers. But it's the motive behind why you're praying. If you're praying those long prayers because somebody's going to pat you on the back and say, boy, are they real spiritual. Listen at that long prayer that they're praying. You know, sometimes, church, I haven't been able to pray long prayers because I really didn't know what to say. There's been times in my life, all I could say is, Jesus, help me. Help me, Lord. You know why? Because He looks until a broken and a contrite spirit. But they were saying those long <laughs> prayers so that men would give attention to what they were saying. But I'm not praying so men can hear my prayer and pat me on the back and say, Boy, that brother Ralph can, can really, really pray. No, it's not how long your prayers is, but it's the motive behind your prayers. It's what you're really saying from the depths of your heart. You see, they, wasn't, they were not praying from their heart. They were praying, and it was a pretense. Let's look at that word pretend, what it means. It means to give a false appearance of being possess of being possessing or performance. To give a false appearance. That's what pretending is. And you know what, church? We gotta be careful that we're not pretending today. It doesn't hurt to reveal your weaknesses. Some people think they gotta be strong all the time. You don't have to be strong all the time. Because when you reveal your weaknesses to God, that's the, only, that's the only time that God can really... You know, preachers are bad about this. And you know me, I, I'm pretty honest here. I tell you, I tell you, and you know, I, I would, I've been telling you this, that we all fight our own battles. And, my, and, and the greatest battle, and I'll reveal this to you, the greatest battle that I face... 68 years old, been preaching for 42, for, for 40, 44 years now. Uh, no, I'm sorry, been preaching for 54 years now. Been preaching for 54 years now. The greatest battle that I'm facing now, and I didn't face it when I was younger, is my faith in God. I have a lot of questions that I don't understand. And you might think, Brother Ralph, look like you've gained so much wisdom and knowledge in the Word of God. Look like there would be no questions. <laughs> Let me tell you, the more I learn, the more questions I have. The more I, I learn, let me say that again, the more I learn, the more questions that I have. And that's the growing process. You see, and I will never, I've come to the conclusion that I will never understand everything about God because God's understanding is infinite. It goes on and on and on. So I don't want to pretend. You know, some preachers think if somebody poses a question to them that they have to have the answer. But there are some questions you may ask me. And I may say to you, I really don't know the answer. Because if God doesn't give the answer, I can't pretend like I have the answer. There's a lot of questions. Why? 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 How many of you ask questions in your life concerning God? <laughs> concerning situations that you're in in your life? Situations that you're going through in your life? And you may have questions, why, why, I don't understand. You know, I had written that song, I don't understand why sickness comes 
when I've got my faith in God. I don't understand the pains of death. Loved ones left all alone. I don't understand why there's so much hurt in a world made by God's own hands. I don't understand, but I still hold to His hand. Faith is not having all the answers, but faith is believing. You know what? If you ever get all the answers, you'll no longer have to walk by faith. If you ever come to a point in your life Believe me, there are going to be unanswered questions that's going to puzzle your mind. And don't think that you're not a Christian. Again, I have more questions now than I had when I was young. When I was young, it seemed like I didn't have hardly any question concerning God. But the, but, the, but the more knowledge that I have acquired and the more wisdom that I've acquired, it's like you go to a higher level. You go to a high level and you keep learning more and you realize there's more and there's more and there's more to learn. It's infinite. It never stops. So when, when, when as, as I gain more knowledge concerning God and the things of God and as I read the Word of God, it doesn't mean that I have found all the answers to all of my questions. Because I will never... The just shall live by what? Faith. What is faith? Faith is the substance of things hoped for, but no evidence. God, you never, you haven't given me the evidence. I can't understand why there's so much hurt in the world made by God's own hand. I can't understand why there's sickness when you've got your faith in God. I don't understand those things. I just know that it requires faith. Again, if I ever get to a point in my life when I have all the answers, then I'll no longer have to walk by faith. But my journey that I'm on and the journey that you're on is a journey of faith. You will never have all the answers. And you know, people are trying to figure it out. They want the answers. I want all the answers. And the answers do not come. 68 years old. I pretty well know this book pretty good. I've been have read it from front to back, no tell how many times. And still, I have so many unanswered questions concerning God, concerning the world, concerning things. And I really cannot figure it out. And I still have so many questions. Why God? Why God? I don't understand. But you know what you've got to learn, church? I don't understand. But I hold to His hand. And that's what faith is. Not understanding, but still holding on to the hand of God. So what I'm saying to you today, you don't have to pretend. Preach, you know why preachers fall? There's a lot of preachers that fall because they get to the realm of living in a pretense. They want everybody to look at them as almost as being the Almighty. Like, hey, I'm, I'm a preacher. I'm up here and y'all down here. No, we're all on the same playing field. I'm not up here. He's up there. He's up there and we're all on the same playing field. What did Paul say? Paul said, I have fought a good fight and I have kept my faith. Why did Paul say that? <laughs> because the devil is trying to take our faith away. Yes. That's the thing that the devil wants to take more than anything else away. Because without faith, it is impossible to please God. So the devil, no, he may not make you an alcoholic. Maybe that is not your temptation. Maybe your temptation is not to become a drug addict. Maybe your temptation is not illicit sex. Maybe that's not your temptation. But the devil doesn't care how he destroys you as long as he destroys you. So I'm telling you this morning, there's some people, the devil's working on your faith, just like he's working on mine. But you know what? Paul said, I have fought 
And that's what I plan on doing. It's going to be a fight. And it's going to be a struggle. It's going to be a battle. All the way to the end. But Paul said, I have kept the faith. And I have finished my course. Therefore, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. I cannot lose my faith in God. Because of a situation, there's been situations in my life that I found myself in. And I didn't know, I didn't understand. Why, God? Why would you allow me to be in this situation that I'm in? I don't understand. Why, God? And I mean, the devil just keeps putting the question of why. He just, he just, he just keeps putting the question, why, why? And I say, I don't understand. But you know what I got to do? I have to have faith in God. Not faith in my own abilities. Not faith in my own strength. Not faith in my own wisdom. Not faith even in my own knowledge. Again, you might say, Brother Ralph, you've been preaching for so many years. It looks like you know everything that there is to know about God and everything that there is to know about this book called the Bible. But there are so many things I still don't understand. I don't have the answers to all the whys in life. But I do have one answer. I'm going to hold on to His unchanging hand. I said, I do have one answer. I'm not going to lose my faith in God. Because if I lose my faith in God, think about it, church. Where am I going to go to? Who am I going to turn to? If I lose my faith in God, I lose my hope. And Paul said in one place, if I had hope in this life only, I'd be all men most miserable. So if I lose my faith in God, what am I going to transfer that faith to? You're going to transfer it to your job? You're going to transfer it to your wisdom and your ability? Where, where are you going to transfer that faith that you've lived with for so many years? Where are you going to transfer that faith? Where are you going to put that faith in? Are you going to put it in your own abilities? I recognize I can't do that. Because there have been so many things in life that if I would have had to trust my own abilities and trust my own strength, I would have fallen. I would have made, and the Bible says, those that have, have lost their faith have made shipwreck of their lives. And that's what happened. And some people get to a point in their life, I don't need God anymore. There's a lot of people out there in the world that feel like they don't need God because they got a lot of money. They got a lot of money. They got it stored up in the bank and they got a lot of money. Let me tell you what. You can lose that overnight. That money can be gone overnight. Is that where your faith is? Your faith may be in your job. You may have a good job. Let me tell you, something could happen tomorrow. That's right. You could get some kind of disease in your body. Something could happen to you. I mean, all of a sudden, it could happen to you and change the whole course of your life. And if your faith is in that job, because the Bible said the world going to pass away. All the world, the lust of the world, and all that's going to pass away. Yep. It's going to pass away. Nothing here is assured. You know, Brother Ralph, I have insurance. Does that give you assurance because you have insurance? You can lose that insurance tomorrow. There's been people that had good paying jobs, that had a lot of insurance and everything looked good, and the next day they got a report, you fired or something happened, and they lost their job, they lost their insurance, they lost all of their, everything that was stable in their life. Amen. Because I'm going to tell you, this world is sinking sand. Right. If your hope is built, you know there's a song that says, my hope is built on nothing less. In Jesus Christ and His righteousness. All other hope is nothing but sinking sand. 
So I would say to me, and I would say to you today, if I walk away and lose my faith in God, where am I going to go to? You know, the disciples, there was a lot of people leaving Jesus at the end. How many know that? A lot of people, after he quit doing all the miracles, oh, they were there when he was doing the miracles. I mean, they had so many multitudes following Jesus that the little woman with the issue of blood, she had to crawl to get to Jesus because there was such a throng around Jesus. But in the end, when Jesus was getting near the end, they began to leave him. And he looked at his disciples and he said, Will you leave me also? And I think it was Peter that spoke up and said, Lord, where are we going to go? You're the only one that has words of eternal life. So let me tell you, church, this life is just a vapor. You're here today and you're going tomorrow. There was a time that I sat where you sat as far as age wise. Some of you are real young in here. You got young people here? I was a young person one time. I was your age at one time. And sometimes it just seems like yesterday. Paul, I, I, I think it was David said, once I was young, but now I'm old. And you might think, I got a lot of life to live. Because you're so young. But the Bible says life is just like a vapor. Talk to an older person. You're here today. You're going tomorrow. That's how it seems sometimes. It seemed like it wasn't that long ago I was up in Bible college. A young man in Bible college. You know, and, and, and I look back on those years and it seemed like it wasn't that long ago. But now I'm an older man. And what if I would have walked away from God way back then and I would have done all the things that the devil would have wanted me to do? What were some of those things that he really wanted me to do? And what if I would have given my life over to that? I'd still be 68 today. And I'd be miserable. Why? Because I wouldn't have my faith in God. Because I realize now I'm getting close to the end. And Paul said, I have fought a good fight. It's a fight. It's a struggle. Don't get me wrong. Coming to church and serving God is not the easiest road. There's people that's looking for the easy road to take. They want the easy way. I'm not up here to tell you that this is the easiest way. Follow this book. Because you know what? we got so many enemies out there in the world. Satan wants to bring us down. That's right. That's right. It's not the easiest way. Right. But he said, where are we going to go? You're the only one with words of what? Yeah. Eternal. <clears throat> Eternal. Because after Ralph lives his life here, there's still eternity that lies before me. So I could have left God at an early age. And I could have lived any kind of lifestyle I wanted to live. Where would I be at now at 68 years old? I probably would have lost my family. I probably would have lost, I wouldn't have the relationship with my children that I have. And you know what I'm saying to you, church? I preached this the other day. If there were no heaven and hell, this life is still worth living. Amen. And I'm not serving God. You got the wrong attitude if you're serving God just to escape hell. You got the wrong attitude. And I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not serving God just to escape the flames of hell. But I would say to you today in all honesty, the life that I've chosen to live for God, if I would have walked away from God years ago, I would still be 68 years old today. And what kind of shape would I be in? You know, I went to the, uh, a doctor the other day uh, and the doctor checked me out and he said, everything is perfect. You're perfectly, you're perfectly healthy. But I can tell you what, if I would have gave over to the devil, 
I would be perfectly healthy today. If I would have given myself over the devil, there's no telling what kind of gutter I would be in today. And at 68 years old, I would be a lonely old man. Because someone is listening to the devil today. And the devil is painting you a pretty picture of what your life could be if you didn't have God in it. I'm changing now. God just taking me here. How many want to go with him? Let him that have an ear hear what the Spirit said to the church. God, the devil is talking to some of you here this morning. And I believe it's more than one. And he's trying to tell you what kind of life you can live if you extract God and conviction out of your life. <laughs> but where are you going to go? Oh yeah, you can do your thing. You can do your thing and have your fun. But I'm going to tell you, the fun and laughter are going to cease one day. I'm telling you again, all the fun and laughter is going to cease one day. And I have no doubt if I would have given myself over to the devil because the devil wanted me as a child. He wanted me when I was young. Some of you young ones here today, the devil doesn't want to wait till you become an adult to get you. He wants to get a grip on you right now. Right. He wants to get a stronghold on you right now. But if I would have given, and believe me, I had some temptation. I had some demons I had to fight. Brother Ralph, you're a Christian. How did you have demons? When I go to do good, evil is always present there with me. It's not in me. But evil is always there. And the devil is always trying to lure. He's always trying to get you. But if I would have given myself over to the devil, I would not be the man that I am today. I would not be, haunt, be standing behind a pulpit. I'm telling you if I would still be living, which I doubt I would still be living, I would be in some gutter somewhere. I might be under some bridge somewhere, homeless. I would have lost my precious family. I wouldn't have got to enjoy. I enjoy my grandkids and my kids. I enjoy them so much. But if I would have given my life over to the devil, I would not have that same joy. You know what my greatest concern is? Oh God, I want to go to heaven. But I want them to go too. Yes. Do you feel that way? Yes. I want to go to heaven, Brother John. But I want to live a life in front of them. I want to live a lifestyle in front of them that I can let my light shine and they'll want to follow in my path that I've chosen to walk. Let your light so shine before men. That means the whole world. But even your own children. I want to go to heaven. But I don't want to go to heaven alone. I want to go to heaven with them. So I want to live the kind of life that I need to live. I want to let my light shine so that one day I'll meet them or they'll meet me in heaven. One day. Maybe your children are not in church right now. But you know what? Don't join them. Why do we think? Why, why, why does people's mind think? Well, I'll go join them. I can't get them saved, so I'll go join them. No, why don't you get them to come join you? Because greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. The power of God is greater than the powers of hell. So you just stand. And you keep fighting the fight of faith. Even though there's things you don't understand. And I want to end this by saying today. There's going to be things about God. That you don't understand. You can't figure out. And you never will be able to figure out. Mark it down. If you figure this one out, if you figure that one out, there's going to be something else you can't figure out. Because again, I'm going to conclude by saying there's going to be some unanswered questions. 
Because the just shall live by faith. We walk by faith and not by sight and by what we understand. So there will always be something that I don't understand. And the devil is going to make sure it's about God. He's not going to make sure it's about Him. Huh, no. He's not, going to, he's not going to make sure it's about Him. He's going to make sure the unanswered questions is about God. Why? Why would God let you go through this? Why would God put this on you? Why would God allow that? You know what you have to stand on? A thing called faith. You can't put faith in your own wisdom, your intellect. You can't put faith in the doctor. You can't put faith in, in, in all everything that you've learned. You can't put faith in God. You've got to put faith in that one that knows everything. There's not one thing that God doesn't understand. His, his understanding, the Bible says, is infinite. You know what that means? It goes on and on and on. Have you ever looked at the stars? The stars seemingly to be infinite. But there's probably an end somewhere. But you look at those stars and it goes on, you can't even see some of them. They're so far out there. And some of them are gigantic. They're, they're bigger than the earth itself, but you can't even see them. You know why? That universe goes on and on. And galaxy after galaxy, they, they can look through their telescopes and so forth, what scientists have come up with, and they can only see so far. But it just goes on and on and on. God's understanding even goes beyond that. He knows all things, understands all things. So I want to hold on to Him. And I want to have faith. With every head bowed. I know I've spoken, not me, but I know the Spirit of God has spoken to some of you today. And I feel like this is your battle. The devil wants you to lose your faith in God because you can't understand and figure some things out in life. You can't figure it out. And the devil wants you to lose your faith. You know why? Because you'll make a shipwreck of your life. This day forward, say, I'm going to keep the faith. Is there anyone, anyone here today who would lift their hands and say, Brother Ralph, the devil is working on my faith. Would you raise your hand? There's hands all over this building. I know God has spoken in this service today. I lift my hand. Because I'm going to tell you, if he's ever worked on anything in my life, it's been my faith. He's bombarding my faith with everything that he has. But Brother John, he's fighting a losing battle because I'm going to keep holding on to that unseen. I'm going to keep holding on to the song that says, I'll keep holding on to that unseen hand. I can't see it. But I know the hand of God is moving. You feel the devil moving. You feel his hand upon you. But there's an unseen hand that's working for your betterment. God's working for your betterment. God's not working to destroy you. God's working maybe to bring you to your knees. Or God's working to bring you to a position that you'll say, I need you, God. Don't pretend today. Don't pretend today. So I'm going to ask you today. You can pretend that everything's all right. Now I know you're done. We speak by faith when we say that. We speak by faith. And if, you, if I say everything's all right, I'm speaking by faith because I'm not speaking because of the situation that I'm in. But it's nothing wrong with showing our weaknesses. You raise your hand today. The devil's working on your faith. You're showing your frailties. You're showing your weaknesses. So if there's anyone that'd like to come today and like us to pray for you. And you may be saying, I don't want to pretend to have all the answers. And I don't want to pretend that I'm so strong because right now I'm kind of weak. But you know what? The strong help bears the infirmities of the weak. You may be weak today. I may be strong. But I may be weak tomorrow. And you may be the strong one. You see, that's what a church is all about. That's what a body of believers is. So if there's anyone like to march up to this front today, you'd like to come up here and say, I need prayer today. <coughs> come on, Shelby. That's it, son. Yes, you you might have got a bad report from the doctors. But you see, the doctor don't write the last chapter of your book. Right. 
The doctor's pen does not write the last chapter of your book. God's the one that's going to... And I tell you what, He can change the course of your life. Anybody else want to come? Come on up. Anybody else want to come? These that up here, I want to... Come on, church. Let's come in.